there once was a scientist who discovered by analyzing the nature of the universe that he could create a portal to the future. But in order to open this portal, that scientist needed administrators. And he soon learned that if the administrators did a good job, that this portal would lead to a world in which there was freedom, in which there was prosperity. But he also figured out that if they did a bad job at administering this portal, that would lead to an authoritarian hell where everybody's lives were micromanaged by a digital dictator. This portal is now being opened by digital currencies. I wrote a book called Beyond Bitcoin, The Future of Digital Currency, and in that book, I talk about some possibilities. One of those possibilities is what I call blockchain socialism. In blockchain socialism, a government, perhaps like ours, creates a national currency in which they mandate that you have an account. And once you have that account, they know how much money you make. They know how much money you spend. They know who you do business with. And they can even record your GPS location when you make purchases. With this kind of system, they can create algorithms that will automatically take your money and redistribute it to people who are frankly thieves and do not, do not deserve it. But there's something else. There's a currencies in which you don't have to have an account. You don't have to log in. Nobody can tell that you have them. They're completely private. <clears throat> These currencies, you cannot lose, and they cannot be stolen. We call this perfect money. And tomorrow, Friday the 13th, in the Bordeaux room across the hall, we will present for the first time the theory of perfect money. It turns out that economists don't really understand what money is or what monetary systems are. I have a degree in computer information systems, a PhD, all my dissertation. I've been teaching computer science for 17 years. I believe that monetary systems are information systems and that money is data. Our brains are like computers and we process this data and through all of our decisions, money commands and controls the entire economy. Without money, our civilization would collapse. With bad money, we'll get what they have in Venezuela. People not farming, people starving to death. They don't know what they should do. But with good money, we can make good decisions. For example, when I go to the store and I want to buy some eggs, well, eggs are pretty much the same. And if one carton of egg costs a little bit more than the other, I'll choose the cheaper one because it's more efficient. And so by this process, all of us doing this every day when we're shopping, we are able to economize. And that's one of the things that money gives us, the ability to, to economize and reward people who are the most efficient. <clears throat> so one of the, the biggest problems that computer scientists have had is something called physical integrity. In California, we had a monetary system called eGold, and this was in the 90s. Everybody put their gold into a vault, and um, they issued digital certificates, and there was billions of dollars worth of trade that went on. It was great. But then a thief came in and kicked down the door, and it took all the gold. That thief was in the state of California, and it showed that, unfortunately, that currency, currency didn't have what's called physical integrity. How can we have a currency with digital integrity if the government can just come and shut down the servers? How can we have physical integrity if hackers can hack in and steal everything? Or if you can lose all your money? How can we have a currency with physical integrity when uh, <clears throat> uh, people can counterfeit? They can just take the files and copy and paste them a million times. So this has been a big problem. Now the first currency to solve this problem is well known. It's called Bitcoin. 
and it has solved the problem well enough to be accepted and used. What we figured out is that the blockchain is something special. The blockchain is a database. It allows us to write to it and we can read from it, but we can't make any changes. We can't make any alterations. If we do that, people will know. And uh, it's a special database because it does not belong to any individual. It does not belong to a corporation. It does not belong to a government. It belongs to a super organism, which is humanity. And that's why I call it a super base. Now I've taught database design and administration for decades. And I can tell you that there's only a few other databases like this in the world. One of them is a database that I've invented called the Ringo. The other database is something that you use every day most likely. It's called DNS, the domain name system. And when you want to go to a website, your computer needs the IP address. It doesn't need the name. And so you give your browser www.freedomfest.com and the DNS system is this global database that will tell you what the IP address is. Now, governments would love to control this because if they could control the DNS system, they could control what websites you go to and what information you could see. The Chinese government would love to have this. Hackers would like to bring it down just to make your life hell. Jihadists would like to bring it down and bring down civilization. But listen to this. Since 1985, the DNS system has never gone down. You can nuke it, and it will not go down, just like you can nuke the blockchain. Now, we have taken the DNS system, that super base, and we have evolved it to create a counterfeit detection system. And so the blockchain works because it records every transaction that's ever happened, and you can go through those transactions, and you can see at the end who owns the transaction market, who owns the money. However, that is not necessary. We should be able to just trade with each other and then just check to see if the money is real or not. And that's how we've created this RADA database. It's called the Redundant Array of Independent Detection Agents. And it is a global cloud-based system which gets its physical integrity from redundancy. <clears throat> It allows us to create other things besides digital currencies. We've created the first version of digital baseball cards, basically. Memorabilia, we call it Celebrium. You've actually got the opportunity to get some for free, and the first celebrities in the world to be on Celebrium are in fact Naomi, our MC, and uh, our director, and uh, also Kevin Harrington. So I would suggest that you collect those because you can actually own them and they are historical. Now the thing that the radio gives us is it gives us 100% privacy because we don't have to log into something the money logs into to stuff. And Ayn Rand once said that society or civilization was the progress towards a society of privacy. Now imagine that you had money and nobody knew it. Imagine a thief came and shook you down and couldn't find any money on you. Imagine you could transact and nobody knew about those transactions. Well, the thieves couldn't steal from you. And if the thieves couldn't steal from you, then you would become more powerful. And the thieves, well, they would become weaker. And if this happened enough, over enough time, then you would become much more powerful. And the thieves, well, they would have to get a job. <laughs> and where are they going to get a job? Well, they're going to have to get it from you, because uh, you're, the, you're the ones that are actually making the value in the economy. <clears throat> and so through digital currency, liberty can dominate. There's lots of people that are here at this conference that are creating the future. For example, we've got Stan Lerner here from BitShares. 
and we've got Quintrix, and we've got other gold-based currencies. If we are able to steer the course right, we can create a libertarian society. But pretty soon, the socialists are going to figure out that they can use digital money to turn against us. And we've already seen Venezuela do a national cryptocurrency, which is basically a cryptocurrency so they can steal from people. We're going to see that in the future. It's up to us to steer that course. Thank you very much.